so um, it's 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 a year long program. Um, you are in India. What what ha, uh, you come back? Um, you continue doing. Do you combine that time with any other experiences there in Germany? Mm, I mean, not really. I th- as I've said, I think Germany is one of the best places to study, really. Yeah. And so we are really enjoying that experience. Mm. Um, just as a student, everything is set up for you to succeed as mm. a student. Mm. The, the thing I found most fascinating is that on Saturday, no, Friday evening and Saturday, the bus schedules for the city are calibrated to fit the social life of the students. Oh. Seriously, so they're like bus, bus routes that pass students' hostels. Jeez. On s- Friday evening, they pass the nightclubs and they... <laughs> <laughs> they change the schedule so that students can go out and have fun and come back safely. That was like, wow. Um, uh, everything I said is set up for you to succeed. I, I, I want a repeat of life. I'm telling you. Just to go back. Just to German. It was, no, that's um, really, it was, that, yeah, that's you're well there like stress-free studying. Yeah. Excellent facility, as I've said. Yeah. You know, as I had a scholarship, so you don't think about healthcare, you yeah. don't think about no, food, that's really about nice. these tuition. And you're in your late 20s, mid-20s, um, late 20s at late that 20s, time. Late 20s, late 20s, early yeah. 30s. That's yeah. when, um, the master's, I was, oh, I was late 20s, actually. Late 20s. Yeah. So <clears throat> you're, you're kind of at a good space mentally, yeah. um, experience-wise. Experience, yeah. You're mature enough to want to have fun, to go out, to yeah. to do those kinds of things, to socialize things. and focus exactly. at, in and school. Exactly. And the connectivity of the of the country, mm. like we went, I don't know, to Austria, went to Switzerland, went to Italy, mm. we went to, because you could just wake up like yeah. a weekend and say, we're taking a train to Switzerland. And the Schengen countries are literally... They're just like, fa- you take a fast train, yeah. within how many hours you're at the border, yeah. you cross over, you have fun, you come back, take a train. So your weekends were really nice, huh? They were really nice. Like, even just just like traveling within the region. Yeah. So, because transport was cheap, mm. we had a student car that would get you a discount on the trains. Oh, wow. So, it was like, um, yeah, a very, very good time. This that one, one year. Huh? One year, yeah. One year. Um, <laughs> the, social, the, the social and the whole immersion into you know a different culture different country. yeah yeah did Those you have good. other other people that were from this region that you traveled with yeah Down so there. the master's course was an international master's course mm-hmm. it was in english mm-hmm. that's one thing which, that's really nice which was nice we didn't yeah. have we learned german just to yeah, go into get the restaurant and, mm-hmm. and get by mm-hmm. but then the, the whole course was in english so mm-hmm. we had students from different parts of africa mm-hmm. I think we were about eight africans mm-hmm. um, students from different parts of asia mm-hmm. maybe another eight or ten mm-hmm and then um, some from different parts of Europe, especially Eastern Europe, mm. and then a few Germans. Mm-hmm. So we were lots of Africans, lots of Asians, mm. um, Eastern Europe, and then mm-hmm. um, a few locals, uh, a few Germans, mm. yeah, maybe three or four. Mm. So that was the that was the master's course, 25. Mm. And as I've said, very intense, mm. uh, very involving, mm. but also very interesting. It, mm. was a, it, it was a different kind of uh, experience as a student mm. because I got 99% in an exam. Several times, oh, like ninety nine percent. How do you get ninety nine percent in a, in an exam in a it, master? Yeah. Because one thing which was like so interesting was that number one, you're not an, you're not a walking encyclopedia, mm. so you don't need to know everything. Mm. You need to know where to find information mm. at the time when you need it. Mm. So they invested a lot in teaching us how to find information. Mm. So I don't need to know much about a subject. Mm -hmm. I just need to know where are the right places to look for information about that subject Mm -hmm. and then be able to read and synthesize Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and, and, and come up with facts about about Mm -hmm. the subject. Mm -hmm. That was liberating Mm -hmm. because in medical school, Mm -hmm. you had to remember the nerve and- And store it. And all this and store like Mm -hmm. these mountains of information that Mm -hmm. then you regurgitate on Mm -hmm. a piece of paper Mm -hmm. and then you get 50% or 52%. (laughs) That was the first thing. You don't need to be, you're not a walking encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. The second thing was, Every answer potentially is right as long as you can defend, defend it. it. Yeah. So there was no wrong or, or right answers mm. in the master's course. Mm. Every answer could be mm. defended. Mm-hmm. And the, the lecturer would read it and say, okay, mm. fair enough. Mm. So this one I you, get you what passed. You say. Yeah. Exactly. So there was mm. like, no, this one, X, Y. Mm. So we got 99% mm. in exams mm. <laughs> in the master's. That was strange. Very, like, very um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. So. Mm. And then, as, as you said, it was very, uh, it was a new way of learning. Mm. 
very collaborative mm. we had lots of group work mm. you know presentations mm. Mm. you it was a, a very like sort of a breath of fresh air from mm. sitting and somebody's like, mm. Mm. and you're scribbling mm. furiously mm. notes that you go back and mm. read mm. it was it was completely different and you don't also experience <laughs> work a bit of work life so your you had matured you had your you are no longer just a full-time student yeah. you you had seen what studies can what actually study do can you, you do. know you yeah. you'd put it into practice so it was the theory had been put into practice for quite a bit of time I, yeah in a real way and you taught as well i had taught as well yeah, yeah. i taught mm. so they would give us group work presentation mm. it was a it was a very nice very mm. nice course but then i think um i think my evolution as a person mm. really took root mm. during that one year mm -hmm. And um, when I think about a person it's, as an African to mm -hmm. begin with, I think that's when my African identity mm. became so obvious to me. Mm. And I started seeing the world differently. Mm. Because when you're here, you're here. You're, we are all you know, Africans mm. and you don't see, mm. you know, like the, 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 how you're perceived maybe mm -hmm. by other people mm. and how some things which we do without thinking how harmful they are mm. to our psyche, but mm. also to the whole. Mm. So that was really my awakening as an African happened mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm. Now, I mentioned earlier when I went to medical school, I was this like social mouse, like mm. very quiet, like mm. somewhere there in the corner. Mm. I was, I didn't have like lots of friends and like, so I was like this person who had come from a Catholic boarding school. That was me in medical school. Mm. Now, when I was posted as a doctor mm. in this, place where I spent three years mm -hmm. that's when I started like talking to people mm. because when you go to church mm. they would say we recognize the presence of the doctors from Shere. doctor do you want to come and say something to the people the first time I went to church I was like oh my god they said doctor you know come up you know we have new doctors the church starts clapping mm. I was sitting at the back I was like I have to walk from the back mm. and go to the front of the church and say something mm. Oh my God, if there was a way that this, the earth could swallow me, you. I would have like clicked something and the earth would swallow me. Mm. I was terrified. Mm. And then I got up, I was like, okay, look here. You are a doctor. They are they are welcoming you to this community. They have mm. announced you in charge. Mm. So get up. I got out of my seat. Mm. I walked in front mm. and I had to give a little speech. And that was, that was like um, also like a liberating experience. Mm. But it was also something where I started becoming conscious about who I am. Mm. Not everybody gets announced in church mm. <laughs> that we recognize the presence. It's the MPs and I don't know who yeah, else. Exactly. So I was like, okay, it means something for me to be a doctor mm. in this community. So mm. I need to embrace it and maybe mm. acknowledge mm. the responsibility that comes with that. Mm. You go for a wedding, mm. a funeral. Mm. So I knew now after that experience, I knew that everywhere I go, mm. there will be an expectation mm. that I'll say something. So I have to figure mm. out what am I going to say. Mm. So now instead of being caught off guard, mm. when I would go for anything, I would be prepared. Mm. If it's a wedding, if it's a colleague, whatever mm. it is, okay, I can talk about this. Then I'll say, ah, oh, you know, we now have HIV testing. We test on Tuesdays and Fridays, mm. and the cost is like this, so it's free. Mm. So I would, I would use it as an opportunity to mm. say things mm. that were relevant mm. to the community. Mm. Uh, or there's a new program of you know, national immunization days and, mm. you know, we are doing this or the other, we've started mm. testing for diabetes. So I would, I would, I would add other things mm. if I was asked, given an opportunity, but I knew that this was coming. Mm. But I think one of the things which I can say has helped me in life is to like constantly self-reflect and say what, what, it, what, what let's try to find meaning in things. Mm. So I'm being called to talk to people in the church and mm. I say, okay, this means something mm. like what is the thought process behind the person who called me yeah and what does this mean for me but also for <coughs> my work mm. and mm. other things so i learned to speak mm. to people mm. when i was in Rochelle. Mm -hmm. parties what mm -hmm. now i go to germany mm. and um in the first <laughs> first lecture that we had we were asked to introduce ourselves so we're sitting in a, in a, in a U. Mm. And so you'd start and say, okay, I'm so and so. And this is where I come from. This is how old I am. This is my experience. This is my expectation and um, anything. Like what do, you, what do you have to contribute to the training? Mm. Like based on your, on your experience. Mm. So I'm sitting in this class. As I've said, we're about eight Africans. Mm. And then there was a lady. She, she later became my friend. Mm. She was from Croatia. Mm -hmm. So the first African that spoke 
I don't remember, I think it was probably somebody from Ghana. We had people from Ghana, Cameroon, mm. and myself. My future husband was from Burkina Faso. Oh. He was in the same class. Right. So, um, so the person, I think from Ghana, talks. Mm. Mm. As soon as he finishes talking, there were there were like a German who had talk, who mm. had spoken. There mm. was an Asian who had spoken. Mm -hmm. Now the African speaks. Mm. This Croatian woman stands up and says, "Africa has so many problems. You know, in Africa, Africa, this Africa." I'm like, "What? Africa? What is this woman talking about? Who is she? She's from Croatia. So who is she to talk about Africa?" So the first person from Ghana talks. This woman says, "Can I add something?" In Africa, people are very poor. There are so many problems. Okay, I keep quiet. The next person talks, the next person. The next African to speak. Can I add something? You know, when I was in Africa, I'm looking at this woman. I keep quiet. The third time she did it, I said, excuse me, I look at the lecturer. I said, can you stop talking about Africa? Can you let the Africans talk about Africa? What is Africa? Because as I said, I had never even thought about what does Africa mean? It's easy to say Africa. What is Africa? Because before I left, I never saw myself as an African. I was a Minyankore woman from Uganda. from Uganda. Now they're saying Africa. Now you so I say, what, does this, what, is, what is this thing called Africa? What does it mean? Like, mm. who are you? I mm. said, I am from Uganda. Mm. I'm from Bushenyi, Western mm. Uganda. I'm a Minyankore. Mm. So when you say Africa, what do you mean? Mm. I said, there are so many countries in Africa. There are so many tribes. Like, there's nothing like an African experience. And even though it was there, let us, the Africans, talk about this. Who are you? Everybody, like, pin drop silence. I was surprised at myself that I could say that because I was, I don't think I'd ever had any such courage in my whole life. But somehow, something kept on saying, what? Like, don't let this go. Don't let this go. Pin drop silence. So the lecturer like recovered quickly and said, ah, you know, I think she's, she's right. Let's focus on our own experiences. And then perhaps when we reach, uh, when we start talking about X, Y, Z, then, um, you know, we can start getting perspectives from people who have experience in this and that. But you see, for me, that was one of the realization that people talk about Africa for us and they have no right because they don't know what Africa is. They have not lived reality. They, they don't, lived they don't. Yeah. This woman had spent three months in yeah. Ivory Coast. As a visitor. As a visitor. Mm. She had got an Ivorian boyfriend, I think. Mm. I said, that's Ivory Coast, three months. Mm. I said, I grew up, I was born, raised, studied, mm. lived, mm. worked. Mm. <laughs> so, like, mm. you don't know anything about Africa. So just stop it. So when, when the session ended and went for break, now all the Africans came and said, hey, thank you so much. Thank you for saying it. I was getting really angry and I was feeling like, you know, what, what is she talking about? Like, what? Like, thank you so much that that thing you said. So I was like, oh, okay. So this was appreciated. <laughs> and the appreciation was more like this needed to be said. And somebody said it. Oh, my God. From that time, I think you I've became liberated, like completely yeah, liberated. Yeah. Embracing and your Pan-African identity. Yes. While yes. in Germany. While in Germany. It took, <laughs> but it, it, it takes such uh, moments. Yes. Mm. And I said, no one is going to talk about mm. us anymore. Mm. Mm. And of course, they still do. They still but do. They still do. And mm. they don't realize that mm. they, are, they shouldn't. It's the Chinua Achebe exactly. quote. That unless the lion tells its own story. Tell its own story. Yeah. yeah. The hunter will always be yeah. glorified in yeah. this case she's the hunter she's she the came hunter she's the hunter three months and yeah and she knows about Africa. she knows about and that's how global health works you yeah. find people who they come for yeah. three months yeah. short stints and they become african yeah. experts yeah. african experts even yeah. though their stint was in barara yeah in western uganda they become a, a ugandan expert exactly and then the system allows it yeah to and happen <clears throat> I, I i like that you caught that i i don't know it's i, I like again that the, your conscience was pricked in a good way there yeah. because then, and I know we'll talk about it as we continue, you become an advocate for decolonizing development really strongly and uh, it's those, now I can tell the roots. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Um, you can tell some of the roots. You can there. tell some of the roots, yes. Yeah.